Despite the rain and the warning from the government and the police, protesters carry on with Independence Day rallies Friday, June 12, to protest the anti-terror bill in different locations in Quezon City. Before 9 a.m., Quezon City Police Chief Ronnie Montejo stops by the Commission on Human Rights and says they would be forced to make arrests if crowds would not disperse on their order. By 9 a.m., members of Anak Pawis, Bayan Muna, Kabataan, and other allied groups enter the University of the Philippines Diliman campus. There were visual markers on the ground so protesters can maintain physical distancing. A man went around with a placard reminding them to always wear their masks. The demonstrations are called the Grand Mañanita, a jab at Metro Manila police chief the Bold Sinas, whose birthday party was attended by dozens while on strict lockdown. UP campuses are considered safe spaces for protests because of the 1989 Soto and Rile Accord, requiring state forces to give prior notice before they enter the premises. Despite this, policemen arrested protesters in UP Cebu on June 4. Among those who attended the rallies are Aling Marie, a store owner who recently went viral online for criticizing die-hard supporters of President Rodrigo Duterte. No one was arrested in the Metro Manila protests, but in Iligan City, police arrested 16 student protesters. In Malacanang, Duterte's chief legal counsel, Sal Panelo, recommends approval of the unpopular bill that sparked protests online and in the streets. Panelo claims the anti-terror bill is constitutional and has enough safeguards against abuse. Experts say the proposed law uses an overbroad definition of terrorism that will allow its weaponization against critics. Meantime, state-run network PTV4 commits a mistake on Independence Day that will make historians cringe. While showing a backgrounder on the father of the Philippine Revolution, Andres Bonifacio, PTV4 uses a photo of Emilio Aguinaldo instead. The mistake is particularly ironic because it was a jury composed of entirely of Aguinaldo's men who executed Bonifacio for refusing to recognize Aguinaldo's new government. PTV apologized for the mistake. Chinese President Xi Jinping assures President Rodrigo Duterte of China's assistance in the coronavirus pandemic. Xi and Duterte talked on the phone Thursday night, June 11. This comes after the Philippines and China marked 45 years of diplomatic ties on June 9. Malacanang says Xi promised the Philippines would be a priority if China successfully develops a vaccine against COVID-19 as a friendly neighbor. China state news agency Xinhua quotes Duterte as saying China successfully controlled the health crisis. Duterte also supposedly promised to be China's ally against those who oppose it. Duterte is criticized for his soft approach to China, even in the face of illegal encroachments in the West Philippine Sea. Meantime, a vaccine developed by U.S. biotech firm Moderna is also in the works. The firm says it will enter the third and final stage of its clinical trial in July with 30,000 participants. Meanwhile, Mayor Junard Chan of Lapu-Lapu City in Cebu announces he tested positive for the novel coronavirus. I am confident that I will be back very soon as your mayor. Chan says he is asymptomatic. As of June 12, the Department of Health reported a total of 24,787 confirmed COVID-19 cases nationwide, 1,552 deaths, and 5,454 recoveries. United Nations Special Rapporteur David Kay submits a defense to the Manila court handling the high-profile cyber libel case against Rappler, its CEO Maria Ressa, and former researcher Ray Santos Jr. Manila Judge Rainelda Estacio Montesa will hand down her verdict on the case on Monday, June 15. Kay submits an amicus brief or an expert brief to the court to help it decide a case. This is usually seen in constitutional cases before the Supreme Court, where justices ask friends of the court or experts to weigh in. It is rare for an amicus brief to be submitted to a lower court. Kay urges Montesa to prudently apply the Philippine cybercrime law so as not to deter journalists from freely doing their jobs. He adopts the UN Human Rights Committee's position that libel must be decriminalized. He also hits the Philippine government's theory of republication. 
The disputed article was published on May 2012, four months before the cybercrime law in September 2012. But the article was updated February 2014, when Rappler fixed typographical errors. Rappler's counsels argue the theory of republication would violate the Supreme Court's ruling on cybercrime, which struck as unconstitutional the part that punishes aiding and abetting cyber libel. Kay urges the judge to narrowly tailor the cybercrime law in order to guarantee the rights to freedom of opinion and expression. The verdict will be handed down in court Monday, June 15. Former Foreign Secretary Perfecto Yase Jr. dies on Friday, June 12. He was 73. Foreign Secretary Teddy Boy Luxin pays tribute in a tweet saying Yasai recommended him to his post in the United Nations. Yasai served as Philippine Foreign Secretary from June 2016 until March 2017, when lawmakers rejected his appointment over a citizenship controversy. Yasai denied under oath that he was once a U.S. citizen. A series of Rappel reports pointed out Yasai was once an American citizen despite his initial denials. Yasai was a dormitory roommate of President Rodrigo Duterte when they were law students, and later a campaign supporter. From 1995 to 2000, Yasai chaired the Securities and Exchange Commission. He testified at the impeachment trial of then-President Joseph Estrada, accusing him of corruption and abuse of power. Yasai ran for senator in 2001, then for vice president in 2010, but lost in both elections. In the United States, Democratic candidate Joe Biden expresses fear that President Donald Trump will try to steal November's election or not leave office if he loses. White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany dismisses Biden's remarks as a ridiculous proposition. Trump has repeatedly tweeted statements in recent weeks about voting, including a claim that Democrats are trying to rig the 2020 election, plain and simple. A tweet two days later, in which Trump said there was no way that mail-in ballots would be anything less than substantially fraudulent, earned his first ever fact check by Twitter, which labeled the post misleading. Trump's repeated calls to prohibit voting by mail have fueled concerns by Democrats. 